G'day you cheeky dogs, my name's Margie and I'm an Aussie currently living in America. Today's video is going to be the maybe most famous theory I think that first came out from the Bluey verse or the Bluey series and that is, is Bandit and Chili criminals? smugglers, part of an international crime ring. I'm super excited to be doing a deep dive into this theory as well as showing you guys some evidence for and against this theory as well. If you're new to my channel though, I love to do bluey content like theories, breakdowns, Easter eggs. Season three is coming out soon. I'm so excited for it to reach worldwide and not just be in Australia. Also guys, this is a giveaway video as well. All you need to do to enter is hit the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. I'll give a few more details about what the giveaway prize is at the end of this video, but that's that's all you have to do to enter. So how I'm gonna to do today's video, I'm gonna tell you guys the main theory and kind of how it's developed over time. And then I'm gonna go through some of the evidence for and against it. So let's just start off with the main theory. So the theory originally came out on TikTok by a man called Zach Mander. So it was a sort of around on some Reddit threads and things like that, but he's the first one who kind of, I think made it really famous and it got really popular on TikTok and YouTube because of that. I myself also made a few shorts about it and as well as like an insane Bluey Theory is video, but I wanna delve a little bit deeper into the whole theory. And basically it's all based off the fact that bandits pay as an archeologist and Chili's pay as a security airport officer and the cost of their home just doesn't add up because their home is worth about 1.2 ish million dollars and that's a lot of dollar bucks in the bluey verse and in real life so how did they get all that money well this is the theory bandit gets flown out to do jobs as we saw in the episode helicopter where he was flown to long reach we know that there's lots of mines there as well as lots of dinosaur bones as well the idea then is that he's a fifo worker for the mines a fly in fly out kind of person that's why he's also at home but also at work sometimes for long stretches is, and the mining company basically pays him as an archaeologist to check their mine sites before they get started in case there's any archaeological finds any historical artifacts or in a historical place so that they can't build a mine there but the mines want to build a mine there so what they do is they pay bandit off to say that yep everything's okay and anything he finds he gets to take back home with him this then explains why we see so many archaeological finds around the bluey house that big fossil in like the downstairs living room as well as the dog bone in the upstairs living room the dog dinosaur bones that are inside of his study as well as all the other artifacts in his study as well this is the idea of where they come from he just gets to take them but he does need to sell them off to make some money to pay for his extremely nice lifestyle that he has for himself and his kids and this is where Chili comes into it. Because Chili works at airport security, she is able to get these artifacts and smuggle them internationally overseas. And the idea is that they're smuggling them to Bali. Now, why Bali, you might ask? Well, it's pretty close to Australia. We know that the healers have visited Bali a lot, as has Stripe, and he will come into this theory a little bit more in a second. But also, Bali tends to be a lot less stricter than Australia in some areas. So that's the idea is that they sell all the stuff over in Bali internationally. Now, like I said, the healers we saw in swim lessons were in Bali. So perhaps while they were there, that's how they were making connections and selling things. And we also know in the episode pool that Stripe goes to Bali often as well. And then this is how Stripe comes into it. The idea is that Stripe is actually the ringleader of this massive crime ring. And the reason why he is the leader and not Bandit or Chili is because of his lifestyle. He is living a very upper class lifestyle in Australia based off what we see from him and his family. Stripe has an incredibly modern home with a pool and many Bali type artifacts in the backyard. He also has a RV or a caravan. He's got a very nice looking new car as well as in season three, he buys a new electric car. His daughter, Muffin, is obviously spoiled rotten. In comparison though, Bandit and Chili, they live in an old style Queenslander that is sort of falling apart, but they live a pretty nice, comfortable, moderate lifestyle. Enough that they can, in the episode Hammer Barn, just go out and casually buy a Hammer Barn pizza oven that could be anywhere from maybe $700 to $2,000 in real life. So then this makes the idea that Stripe is actually the big boss, so he's earning a lot more money from other people as well, not just from Bandit and Chili. And Bandit and Chili are just doing this just to help live like that average lifestyle. They want to enough to get by and support themselves and their kids, but they don't want to get in too deep. Now, like I said, I'm going to provide you guys with some evidence for and against this. So let's start off with the Bluey house as the first point of evidence, because that's how this theory got started. Now we know that the Bluey house is around the Paddington Red Hill area, because in the intro scene, we always see St. Brigid's Church, as well as the tower on Mount Cutha. And also in the toy caravans, you actually get a map. This map, in fact, which quite literally 
puts the Hilo home in around that Paddington Red Hill area. Now we know that Bandit and Chili had this house in the episode Baby Race, which we know takes place around 2013, 2014, because in the episode Movies, Bluey is six, and there's a movie coming soon in 2020. So using all the math there, we know that they had that house around 2013, 2014-ish, and it looks pretty new. There's not a lot of stuff inside the house, so it's assumed that maybe they just moved in. Now, prices back then in real life in Australia around those areas ranged from one to two million dollars for this style of house in this area with sort of overlooking the city and a massive backyard. And to get a loan for that kind of house in the bank, you'd be paying about $5,000 bucks a month, which works out to about $60,000-ish a year. Now, we know the cost of their school as well, because we know their school is based on the Steiner School in that area. So the cost for Bluey and Bingo to go to school each year is about 16 and a half-ish grand. The average cost of living right now in Australia and over the past few years, I mean, it's increasing right now, but on average, it's like $872 a week, which works out to about 40 25 and a half grand a year. So if we add up all of these costs, it works out to be about $122,000 a year for the healers to just get by basically. Now, if we look online, we can see that Chile's job as an airport security officer averages about $73,000 a year in pay minus tax that brings us to about $58,000. Bandit's job as an archaeologist can range a bit so on the low end of the scale he could earn $70,000 on the high end $90,000 but of course if we take tax out that's then fifty-five dollars to $71,000 a year. So if we combine the two together that means that their average income could be anywhere from $113,000 all the way up to $129,000 which means on the low end of the scale they are not making ends meet. 122, 113, yeah, they are way over budget. But even on the high end of the scale, they still only have maybe $5,000 to play around with each year. I don't feel like they'd be just easily buying a $2,000 hammer barn pizza oven if that was the case. And besides, no bank would actually even give them a mortgage if they weren't earning enough money for that too. So there has to be extra income coming from somewhere. So this leads in into the evidence kind of against maybe them being criminals and how else maybe they could afford the house. And the first idea is from the episode The Creek, where Bandit says that he used to play in this creek when he was a kid, which gives us the idea that maybe the Gila home is Bandit's home that he grew up in. Perhaps Nana Gila gave it to him when they were about to give birth to Bluey because Bluey was the first grandchild, she's the oldest. So she figured that they needed the house the most and her and Bob moved to the Gold Coast and retired there. So that could explain why they have that home, why it's still close to a creek he used to visit when he was a kid, and maybe also why sometimes it needs a bit of fixing up. The second idea comes from season three episode Curry Quest as well as the short that's on the DVDs called Archaeology. Now in Curry Quest we know that Bandit goes overseas for six weeks on a dig which means he's not really working for a mining company he's working as an archaeologist and in the short archaeology we find out that he is working for a university. This also is backed up by the fact that Bandit's job is based on the creator Joe Brum's brother Adam Brum who is also an archaeologist and he is an archaeology professor at Griffith University. So it's most likely that Bandit then works at a university, which changes his pay rate. It makes it from 90 to 120K, which of course then bumps up that amount of money that they're making. This now means that they're earning from 129 to $158,000 bucks a year, and that of course puts them in a very nice position with their $122,000 worth of expenses. Now of course perhaps he bought the house off his mum then so it would have been cheaper or perhaps they bought it as a fixer upper house so again it was a little bit cheaper when they bought it. We know that they're constantly fixing the house. We see it in Hammer Barn and in Bingo and in Postman where they're always fixing little things around the house so that could also explain how they got the house maybe a little bit cheaper when they were a little bit younger as well. This is sort of my favorite idea I think that the pay rate is higher and I feel like it makes the most sense realistically in the bluey verse but i do want to give a special mention to two extra little theories the first one is that perhaps stripe won the lotto which is why he has so many nice things but he was also willing to pay for an apartment in the gold coast for his mom and a fixer up a house for his brother bandit as well so that's a possibility my second kind of real favorite theory is that bandit is the indiana jones of the bluey verse and that when he was younger all the artifacts he found he sold to the museums and that's how he got a stack of cash enough to buy a house in paddington or red hill and help 
help support his family. So what do you guys think of this theory? Do you think that Bandit and Chili are actually criminals and Stripe is their criminal overlord? Or do you think that Bandit was Indiana Jones or that he's just an archeology span professor at the university and they're just able to make ends meet? Let me know what your favorite idea is in the comment section down below. I'm super excited to hear what you guys have to think about this. And also, as I mentioned earlier, this is a giveaway video. I've reached 10,000 subscribers. I'm so excited and I wanted to share my love and excitement with you guys. So this is going to be a giveaway video. All you have to do to enter is hit that subscribe button and leave a comment down below. That's it. In exactly one week from when this video is released, I will do a live stream and I will announce the winners and the winners will either get their choice of the new Bluey dancing and singing plush or of a regular Bluey or Bingo plush as well, depending on what's available in their country. So like I said, just subscribe and leave a comment down below and you are in the winning. I'm going to announce two winners for this as well. So I'm really excited to do it. But until then, I've picked you guys out a few other videos that maybe you'd like to watch and I'll see you cheeky dogs in another video. Mwah! Bye.